Um, I, I love listening to the Holy Spirit, and I just feel to share this. On Friday, I, uh, as you, many of you know, I'm in the car business. I sold a car to a customer on Friday, and we were to meet at Mayfair Mall, and um, he was going to bring this $8,300 check. I was going to bring the car. We were going to meet, do insurance, shake hands, say goodbye. Shannon was going to pick me up and take me home. Anyways, um, throughout the process of selling the car, you know, I provided him with a car proof, and I provided him with an inspection. And on the car proof, it shows the history of the car, accidents, and all that. And he was happy with all of it. And so as this time approaches for this delivery to happen, I noticed on the car proof there was some... Um, some weird mileage numbers. Back in 2015, this car apparently had 190,000 kilometers. And here today, in 2022, the odometer says 162,000 kilometers. And I looked more carefully at the car proof, and there was four entries in succession, about five or 7,000 kilometers apart at this mechanic shop that had this mileage that didn't make any sense. Now, now think about this, I'm, I'm hours away from delivering the car, I've given him the car proof, and he didn't notice, I didn't notice, but now I've noticed. And I have a dilemma, because my flesh goes, well, you know, if I'm showing somebody a car and it's got a big dent in it, and they choose not to look, well, that's not my fault, right? In my flesh, I was thinking, but... If I, if I point this out to him, it's likely to ruin the sale. This car could have 300,000 kilometers. So there's only a couple of scenarios that could happen. The motor was changed, the odometer was changed, both. Or somebody accidentally, four times in a row, wrote the wrong mileage. Now, of course, I'm hoping that somebody accidentally wrote the... Anyway, so I had a tussle with the Lord. You know, I can just keep my mouth shut, deliver the car. I gave him the car proof. He's supposed to read it. But then I would have this internal struggle with, hey, I noticed something he didn't notice. And the right thing to do would be to tell him and show him. And so I finally surrendered. I said, okay, God, I'm going to do the right thing. I don't care if it costs me a fortune. I'm going to do the right thing. And the moment... I made that decision to leave it in God's hands, to listen to what the Spirit was telling me was the right thing to do. The moment all of a sudden this idea popped into my head, phoned the shop and asked them what happened. I said, okay, well, I'm not sure why you want me to do that, God, but sure, I'll do that. So I phoned the shop, and he said that when we enter mileage on our computer, we have an American computer. And Carfax takes whatever number we put in there and translates it into kilometers. But Carfax also knows that our computer is American. And that's why those four were miles ahead of what there should have been. And I was just, thank you, Lord. What are the chances of that being the scenario? So I wrote down the right mileage. I phoned the customer. I let him know. He said, great, Paul, thanks for pointing that out. I never noticed. I'll see you at 4.30. Car deal was done, delivered. Everybody went home happy. And I went home rejoicing and praising God because he found a way where I thought was absolutely impossible. And he found a way. Amen? And the reason I wanted to share this with you is to encourage you. This is specifically in the area of finance where God two days ago put me through this little test. And thank goodness, my wife helped me. And I followed the prompting of the Holy Spirit. I did the right thing. And God blessed me for it. And I went home. I was less happy about the money than I was about the fact that I was obedient. And God showed up. And he honored my decision and blessed me for it. 